Here we go again. I'm probably going to get in trouble for this video as well. I've done a few other videos on the newly elected President Trump during the recording of this video. We are still before Inauguration Day. We do know that President Trump was re-elected for a second term. We've done a couple videos on this. We've done a video on some of the changes that could be coming up on this. And we've done a video on the tariffs specifically that he has talked about putting into place. And in this video, I want to talk more about the equipment itself. I've always tried to remain neutral on our YouTube channel. Some folks have said just by even talking about some of these things that I'm being political. But I think it's important to note some of these things, especially as a consumer. If you are in the market for a heating and air system, some of these things I think should matter to you. Things that you need to know if you're in the market for a heating and air system anytime soon. And so in this video, let's dive into this. Five things that I think are going to affect HVAC equipment specifically now that President Trump has been elected. The first thing is we, during the recording of this video, we're in the beginning phases of the phase down of 410A refrigerant in the beginning phases of the phase out of the equipment itself. We're in the middle of the AIM Act and we talked about that in the first video. I'll put a link to that video down in the description of this one. I'd highly recommend checking that video out where we get into some of those specifics. One thing I wanna note on these new A2L refrigerants that are now being rolled out and we're in the middle of it. They are rolled out. You could buy a piece of equipment with R32 or R454B refrigerant in it right now during the recording of this video. But one thing I want to note is we have heard rumors of more changes to come. And I personally think, I have no evidence of this, but I do think that with President Trump being elected and how that could affect some of the agencies such as the EPA, that some of those rumors we've been hearing, I personally think are now if they were going to be true, they're definitely not true now. Some of those changes may have been another lowering of the GWP in the very short future. I'm not saying it won't get lowered again years down the road, but I think folks were saying, oh, well, it's coming you know, right away, that it's going to affect some of the products that are now coming out even right away. And I think that that is just simply not going to be the case now. I think a lot of these changes that we've now seen and will see coming down the pike are now now going to be dramatically affected, not just because President Trump was reelected, but because other people were not elected. And some of those policies and agendas that were being pushed before just simply won't. And again, I'm not trying to say good or bad on either side. That's not my point here. I just think that some of those rumors can now be put to bed because of his election. Number two, we've done videos on furnaces, specifically on low efficiency furnaces, furnaces that have AFU ratings below 85 to 80% 80 furnaces in that range, furnaces that are non-condensing, lower efficiency furnaces. And we've done videos on this talking about how specifically President Biden had looked at putting rules and bills in place on starting to phase some of these products out to say that they're banned even. And this is just not something that was being talked about. We even saw some states, specifically California, that were looking to ban some of these. Now, obviously the election of President Trump may not affect that, right? If there are certain states that are going to put rules in place, that's not usually something that is affected by an election of a president. But I think seeing again, not just the fact that he was elected, and other people were not elected will play a role in all of this. We're not going to see, I think, personally, furnaces touched now when they were being hard looked at. Things were moving in that direction pretty quickly. And I do think had other folks been elected, that that was a very real possibility that some of these products that you may even have in your home, that they would simply be banned, that you would not be able to replace a furnace with a metal flue pipe because it's low efficiency. You would not be able to replace that with another furnace with a metal flue pipe. We'll see on that, but I, I do think that that's probably the case. Number three is we are already hearing rumblings of folks at the federal level taking aim 
at some of the states and basically coming out and saying, look, when we set regulations and federal mandates in place, whether it's the EPA or any other organization, some states have been known and localities, even counties even, have been known to take codes and building enforcement and things like that and massage it or add their own rules at the local level. And that makes sense in some cases. But we're now hearing that it's a very real possibility where some of these federal agencies are taking aim at the states themselves and saying, look, you're not going to keep doing this. You're not going to take our rules and make it even harder or try to speed things up. When we put rules into place that have been voted on or set at the federal level, you're not going to touch this. That is one thing that I am going to be keeping a very close look at no matter who's president, if that goes into effect, if they do say to states, hey, some of these things, you're just simply not going to touch it. That's one of those things where even folks at the local level, specifically some states that like to push a more faster agenda on timelines, if the national agencies step in and say, uh -uh, that'll be interesting to see if that actually happens. And we're hearing rumblings of that. There's lobbying organizations that are pushing for things like that. Even when they supposedly get a win at the national level, they're still losing the battle in some states, if you will. Number four, we have seen a push in recent years for a new direction, especially with heating and air systems, heat pumps being very much pushed. And I actually don't think that's necessarily a bad thing in all cases. I think heat pumps are more efficient and can do certain things, especially compared to the way they used to be. They've come a long way. Some heat pumps can provide heating well below freezing temperatures, some of them well below zero degrees Fahrenheit. And because of that, we're now seeing them be offered in new markets and installed in very cold climates. But because of that, we've also seen rebates and different sorts of incentives put in place. So that way, homeowners could take advantage of some of these tax advantage programs and, and rebates and, and, of course, incentives and things like that that go towards some of these more efficient cold climate type systems. And I do wonder with President Trump being elected, if some of these rebates, we talked about this in the other video, some of the more specific rebates, but just in general, will they just simply go away? Will they be pushed by the wayside or will he kind of honor that, especially some of these rebates that certain states have already implemented them, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act and some of the other programs that were put in with that. All in all, the equipment itself, will we still see, even with President Trump elected, this direction that's now being pushed towards heat pumps and higher efficiency system and some of the inverter and mini split technologies that are now offered in our country? We're even seeing a push now with new technologies that have been used for years over in Europe, technologies like air to water, heat pump technology, where folks can get their hot water for their plumbing, like showers, and heat their home in much more efficient ways. And again, I'm not saying the fact that President Trump was elected, that that won't still happen, but we may not see agendas push. We may not see folks pushing for those sorts of technologies from a tax incentive standpoint. And then finally, number five, this one is probably my favorite because we have talked about in some of these other videos with tariffs and some of the other things that when President Trump is interacting with other countries, we are seeing some companies take different approaches. Some companies over the last few decades have done things like take manufacturing out of our country, ship them overseas for you know cheaper labor. They're able to produce equipment and things like that outside of our borders and then import those products into our country. But then we've seen other companies take a different approach where they actually come into our country, they build manufacturing. We've done some really cool videos on our channel where we've toured some of those factories and showing how some companies are creating American jobs. What's interesting to me, when I did the video on the tariffs, some of the comments that folks are saying, they're just simply incorrect. I've seen folks say things like, they all do that. They're all shipping things into our country. Or they'll say, oh, well, most of the parts are made and they're just slapping it together. It's just ignorant people with some of the things they say. I'm not saying that some of these facilities that are in our country don't have products that they're installing in some of this equipment that are coming in from outside of our borders. I'm not saying that, but to just simply say, oh, well, they're all doing it. It's just simply not true. Again, when 
President Trump was first elected the first time when he was running for office. We saw him take aim at a specific company and a specific factory in Indiana. And I'm not going to mention any names, but you can go back and look at it. And what's interesting is even after all that took place, those jobs still went away, even though he tried to save those jobs. But again, then we see other companies that are doing the opposite and they are trying to create jobs in our country and do things that help the local communities that they operate in and things like that. It's, it's just simply incorrect to say that, oh, well, they all do it all. Well, they all just bring products here and just, it's just not true. We've got videos that obviously show the opposite of that. My dad even works in a factory here in Virginia where they make equipment, where they build HVAC systems. Actually, he works in one where they build the gigantic ones that go on the top of factories and commercial buildings. Some of these units are as big as a tractor trailer. So that's my five, five things that we need to be watching as President Trump comes into his now second term. I'm not arguing for or against any of these things, but I would love to know what your thoughts are down in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about some of those tariffs that could be put into place with now a new elected President Trump. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.